So good morning, um, everybody at the Dunoon Fellowship. We just um, are giving a little update this morning on how things are going at Street Connect. If it wasn't for the current coronavirus, we would be over there just now, probably sharing about what is going on here. So obviously there's been a lot of changes and a lot of um, bad things happening, but also through this we've really seen God's goodness and we've been able to connect with new people and lots of things are happening. I think before we would have probably shared with you is about Adam, one of the guys who was in our Move On flat. We have him here today and he's going to share a wee bit of testimony about where he is. And we also have Samba who is our community fundraiser and he is going to share um, a little word with you guys and hopefully encourage you and just let you know what's happening. So I'm going to pass over to Adam at the moment and okay on you go Adam. Hi how you doing guys? Um, yeah my name's Adam I'm 30, 36 years old 37 next week. Um, I lived, I lived uh, a, a quite a pleasant childhood um, I was I was I was provided for and stuff, but um, yeah, I won't I won't say too much of that. But that then rolled into the you know um, early early teens, multiple bereavements. I struggled at school with um, dyslexia and stuff, and uh, violent sort of outbursts and that because I, I couldn't really find words to express myself what was going on with me. Um, started getting in with you know the older older kids and stuff and smoking smoking dope and then you know family family separating and stuff and then messing about with heroin and amphetamine and uh, I'd end up dropping out of school I wasn't a daft but uh, I just I was a lost soul and just full of anger um, again coming back so they, they call it these days adverse childhood experiences aces it's no excuse for that uh, you know it was it was on me and violent violence that then led me into young offenders institutions for and then into prison for most of my, my younger um, adulthood, uh, forming bad relationships. That's when I, I really started to hone my skills and um, things I shouldn't be doing. When I came out of prison after years, I would involve myself in all sorts of crime, uh, drug dealing, uh, robberies, resetting the stuff, and you know, uh, ringing motorbikes, stolen motorbikes and cars and all that sort of jazz, you know. Um, my heart was broken. I couldn't. I just. Uh, I couldn't relate. I, I didn't feel a connection to any of the sort of nine to five, the working community. I, I, fe I felt in my heart I, I had a one way ticket straight to hell. There was no acceptance, no forgiveness. I set out my, and that's where I believed I was. I met a guy, a godly individual called Alex McNeil. Um, I stayed in, in Livingston at the time, and uh, a window opportunity opened up. Most of my mates had died by this point. I'd been in out of mental institutions. Um, one of my good friends, a Chinaman, he was in the, in the jail and would be coming out just after the Christmas. Um, Alec talked to us in. He, around it, I used to go to what we call junkie church. Church for the church on a Wednesday night. Uh, and I was part of that that group. And then from there, you know, I basically, I, 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 seen, I seen the opportunity for a I, I, I gave I gave up my little house. I had a little end terrace bungalow with a front and back garden. So I gave it up. An incident had happened and I thought, no, I'm done with this. I went down to the Scottish borders into Whitchester House with a, a Teen Challenge Residential Rehabilitation Unit. I was there for a year. When I left there, that's where my journey with Street Connect began. I moved into one of their moving on flats. I was there. I was there for 20 months. Um, a little bit longer than perhaps we thought it would have been, but Things were good. I received a, a solid level of support, uh, mentoring. I got involved with all sorts of other different manner of different uh, things within the Glasgow area. And, and a little further afield, like Broken Change and Ayrshire and whatnot. It's really stayed in the Christian circles and uh, kept on going. Uh, uh, again, that an internship with Street Connect um, and I, I was successful. I, I proved myself as a good worker. Now I'm full time. Uh, full-time employment with Street Connect. I also have another part-time job uh, up at Brishet Biggs Community Church. I'm the, I'm the caretaker up there, so um, the place is clean as a whistle. <laughs> Teen Challenge style. 
Uh, I'm getting married. I've got a, a lass I've been going with now. I met her at a mission station, at Glasgow City Mission. I get married on Saturday. Uh, she's got a PhD in engineering. I think she switched on the last. She's three months younger than me. So, you know, God is good. And I'm just, I just can't thank you enough for the support that I've received. And I would encourage you to, you know, keep, uh, keep us in prayer. I'm talking about for all the boys that we still work with. And now I'm, you know, blessed to be working with. It's a hard mob to deal with, let me tell you. But listen, thanks so much for listening and thanks for much for taking the time to, you know, get involved. Thanks. Okay, thanks, Adam. You can drop off now, Adam, and then Samba can bring um, the little message. It's been great Magic. to journey with Adam and, you know, he's an extremely hard worker. Often we have to get the guys pulling them along, have to slow Adam down. So that's been um, good. So I'm going to let, hand you over to Samba now and then I will just fi finish off at the end. Okay, thanks Samba. Thank you, Julie. Um, yes, um, isn't God so good? Um, he's good always. You've just heard uh, Adam's testimony and that is all God's doing really. Um, well, um, on behalf of Street Connect and also um, uh, on behalf of all the men and women that uh, we serve, um, I would like to say thank you immensely to all of you, really, for your great support. Um, thank you for all your prayers. Thank you for all your uh, financial giving over the years. Uh, it's been tremendous. Um, may the Lord bless you abundantly uh, for all that you do for his kingdom. Uh, we at Street Connect are truly, truly uh, grateful to you, and we very much appreciate you. Um, so as I said, you know, it's marvelous to hear about Adam's transformation. You know, God does marvelous things in the lives of people that somehow others will just think, well, you know, don't bother with them because it's too late. Um, uh, thank you, uh, Pastor Norman, for giving us the opportunity to share about the reading from the Bible. Um, and did you know that really um, the Lord our God is never too late? He really is never too late, even when it seems that it is too late. Um, there is a reading, a famous reading in the, the book of John, chapter 11, which I'm sure um, all of you will probably will be familiar with. That's, uh, you know, the story of Lazarus. And... Um, uh, uh, the Bible tells us that Lazarus, um, you know, he was unwell and he died. And, uh, and we join the story uh, from verse 1. I just will read just a few verses, not the whole chapter. And verse 1 says, Now a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. And then we jumped on to verse 6. Yet when he heard that Lazarus was sick, and this is Jesus, he stayed where he was two more days. And then we join the story again on uh, verse 17 to 18. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. And verse 21 says, Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And last verse that we are reading together is uh, found in uh, verse 32. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. God is never too late. You see, in the story, um, Lazarus was dead, but Jesus knew the outcome. And there is a, another verse which tells us uh, in there that Bethany, where uh, Martha lived with her sister Mary and the brother Lazarus, it was only two miles away from Jerusalem, where Jesus was. And it, we are told that, you know, when Jesus uh, heard about Lazarus, he stayed two more days. So all, all in all, there were four days in which Lazarus was dead. But Jesus knew that because he told his disciples that the outcome is to the glory of God. So God is never too late. God is never too late in the life of uh, Lazarus because at the end, Jesus came and he said to Lazarus, Lazarus, come out. And there was life into Lazarus. But in your own circumstances, can I just tell you today that God is never too late in your life? 
He's never too late. He's never too late. He knows what is going on in your personal life. He knows what is happening in your family. He knows what is happening in your community. He knows what is happening in your work. He is never too late. And he knows the outcome at the outcome of every situation that you're facing. Absolutely every situation, the Lord, he knows. And of course, he knows the situation that is happening in the lives of the very many men and women that we are serving here at Street Connect. He knows that. And it's never too late. It is sad that sometimes we hear of, you know, uh, men and women that sadly they passed on um, because we have not come across them. But the Lord, and if you, we've just heard the story of um, Adam, the Lord was not too late for him. The Lord was not too late for Adam. And the Lord is not too late for you. So what can you do? What can you do um, after hearing uh, all this, uh, the testimony of uh, Adam? Well, um, please pray regularly for the ministry of Street Connect. Pray for the men and women that we are reaching out to. Please also do pray for the amazing volunteers that um, are helping us at Street Connect and pray for the staff. Please pray for the board of trustees that God will give all of us wisdom and ability to carry on into this work. Please also consider giving financially. Uh, we thank you for all your financial giving, as I said earlier, over the years. But if some of you would like to consider giving reg uh, regularly, we have this program called the Freedom Builder. And uh, all that information you'll be able to find on our website, which I will give you in a minute. But also, not just uh, if you're not able to give regularly, please consider giving a one-off giving as well. It all makes a difference. It all makes a difference. And um, also, there are two more things you can do. And one is to please volunteer. We always need volunteers uh, to fundraise for us and to also join the frontline services. And lastly, you can spread the word spread the word about of what Street Connect is doing because the more people know about Street Connect, the more impactful and efficient it will be for us to reach out the very men and women who are in our communities here in Scotland who are struggling uh, a huge amount. And it's not just in the West, it's in also in the East and every other part. And it is our heart and our desire that wherever the need is, Street Connect will be answering that call. And so, um, please visit our website um, for more information, which is www.streetconnect.co.uk. And uh, thank you again for everything you are doing for the kingdom of God. Thank you, Pastor Norman, for giving us uh, the opportunity to uh, come today and share with you. And um, we uh, pray that God will bless you all and keep you always. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Yes, and thank you. We do look forward to being with you again in person. It is just not the same, but as Samba said, thank you for giving us this opportunity. You know, one really good thing that I am excited about personally is the fact that during this time, God has really got us back to the heart of evangelism. You know, God just loves evangelism. I really believe that. And we are out on the streets and the different job, where the drop-ins would have been, we are now out on the streets and reaching out to people. And, you know, there is an openness in people's hearts at this time through fear, through uncertainty. And it's a real opportunity to share the gospel. Our online recovery groups are going really well. And there is men there who are really seeking God and wanting to know him. And we are so grateful for the team that we have at the moment as well. And yeah, God has been good. So I will go because we don't want to go too much over our time. Though it is a Pentecostal church, which so therefore it is allowed as far as I know. But yeah, we give thanks for you and we just pray a blessing over you guys and hope to be with you again soon. Take care. Bye. Bye.